Greetings everyone, this is Collectibles Euphoria with a review of Beast from the film collection doll line of the live action film Beauty and the Beast by the Disney Store. Beast is a male protagonist from the movie which was inspired from the Disney's 1991 film animation film Beauty and the Beast, but is now presented as his live action film counterpart. Looking elegant with this finely crafted doll, his accurate likeness and detailed outfit bring the timeless tale to life. For more details regarding his doll version, please continue to stay tuned. Beast comes packaged in a clear plastic window style box to showcase all the craftsmanship and all its intricate details. As described before during the Bell's Film Collection doll review, the shape of the packaging is an irregular pentagon shape which makes it non-stackable. The Disney Store logo is located on the right hand corner, the Beast Film Collection writing in the middle, and the Disney Beauty and the Beast logo on the bottom left hand corner. The intricate design of the golden borders have ornate rococo design patterns with frost alongside the borders to simulate the never-ending winter around the enchanted castle. The design concept is continued along the side panels. The back of the box portrays the iconic dance scene by Beast and Belle with the backdrop of the West Wing. The Disney Beauty and the Beast logo is located on the top right-hand corner and the short description of the film collection dolls on the lower middle section. Just like Belle, this doll retailed at $34.95 US dollars and $43.95 Canadian dollars. Beast also comes encased in a scenic packaging with its backdrop being one of the windows of the west wing of the castle, which is a perfect background for him as this is where the enchanted rose can be located. The Beast is a perfect example of a well-crafted doll for a film collection doll as he bears the likeness of the figure incredibly well. My faith with the Disney film collection doll line has been restored upon seeing how finely well Beast doll version was created and him appearing like he jumped straight out of the screen. The Beast is a chimera, which is a mixture of several animals. In the animation, he has the head structure and horns of a buffalo, the eyebrows of a gorilla, the jaws, teeth, and mane of a lion, the tusk of a wild boar, the arms and body of a bear, and legs and tail of a wolf. He appears to be like a mixture of the mythical monsters such as the Minotaur and the werewolf. His only physical feature that does not change whether he is a beast or a human is his blue eyes. In the live-action film, however, Disney has provided a different adaptation to his physical features which portrays more of his human facial details mixed with some minotaur and werewolf details for his overall physique, and some film critics weren't completely happy about it as he was supposed to look entirely beastly except for his eyes, which is supposed to be the only window to his human soul as a base on the animated film. As for me though, I really don't have any qualms about it since the live action films are supposed to not bear the exact details of the animated film as it will not provide a different sense of identity. The characters need to stand out and have a different adaptation but in a way still pay homage to the classic animated film which I believe was accomplished with Beast's overall physical appearance created for this film. The Beast face cult is especially impressive, bearing an uncanny likeness to the Beast in the film. He has a horn which appears more like a ram's horn comparing to the buffalo horn used for the Beast in the animated film. His hair and mane are insanely detailed, as Disney have been using the 3D face scan technology to capture each minor details of his entire head and face. Another praiseworthy detail is how amazingly well the painters painted each intricate small details of his horns, facial details, hair, and mane which captures the exact likeness in the film. His eyebrows appear more humanly comparing to the gorilla eyebrows provided in the animation. His nose appears to be a human nose as well as the lips, though still has some lion features on it, particularly the mouth and jaw area. He no longer bears a tusk of a wild boar. His eyes were blue and are side glancing to the left. If you look closely, his face and hair were molded separately then were attached together to form his entire head. 
This part of the loin that separates the face from his hair, it is really not so obvious and glaring that it ruins the entire look. So I really don't mind as the overall sculpted details still stand out above anything else. B stands taller than Bell at 13 inches. He still bears a sturdy, muscular physique and is clad in a blue ballroom tailcoat trimmed with gold worn during the film's ballroom dance sequence. It is a modified version of the iconic blue suit Beast wore in the animated film. Words are not enough to express how amazing the details were made to recreate the blue suit as seen in the live-action film. Beast wears a navy blue French court suit made from satin and is adorned with ornate gold foil screen art. The ornate gold patterns were the exact replica seen in the film. The only difference is that the ornate gold patterns were embroidered while the film collection doll design pattern was recreated using foil screen art. The suit jacket has multiple brass button closure seen on both sides of the jacket. The suit jacket also has a sack silhouette. The long sleeves have a three button angled turn back cuffs with ornate gold foil screen art. It also has a coordinating lace cravat and lace frills and ruffles under the cuff area. It has an old style pointed pocket flaps which are supposed to have three buttons placed one under each point. The straight pocket flaps also bear the same ornate gold foil pattern on it. The suit has a coordinating navy blue French waistcoat with ornate gold foil screen art as well as smaller brass buttons at the closure. The back of the suit jacket also has more elaborate details with back darts, two brass buttons on each side of the waistline, and has pleated section bearing the same ornate gold foil patterns. This suit has no vents, but is replaced instead by the pleated section, allowing more freedom of movement. The suit jacket can be removed by separating the velcro attachment on the back. The white dress shirt is sewn to the French waistcoat and is heavily padded on the upper chest area towards the shoulder as well as the entire torso in the back which provides a hunchback appearance once it's donned. The inner sleeves also have minimal padding to provide big lean arms. The white dress shirt is made from satin fabric and the lace cravat as well as the lace frills are sewn into it. Beast has below the knee length breeches with velcro closure on the outer sides to allow easy donning and doffing. It is made of false weight fabric and is navy blue in color. It has garter on the waistline and on the back, it has a hole for the attachment of Beast's tail. The tail is actually sewn into the breeches, so pulling it down will reveal that it is really not attached to the buttocks area, which appears awkward and unusual when removing the breeches. However, I don't think anyone plans on displaying Beast without his pants anyway, so this should not be a great issue to deal with. The tail appears to resemble a lion's tail compared to the wolf tail provided to Beast in his animated version. The sculpted details as well as the paint application are finally executed. The only thing missing on the breeches is that it is supposed to have three brass buttons and steel buckles at the knee, which is a typical concept design of a French court suit design, as well as it was seen in the film. However, that detail is missing here. Other than the missing brass buttons, all the details of the pantsuit would have been already perfect. As for his overall physical structure, Disney created a specific structure for Beast as seen on his neck, arms, hands, legs, and feet. The only standard part that they used is the torso, which is a typical body size of their male dolls, but other than that, they have created a special design for Beast to accommodate his different overall physical structure. One big difference is the extended neck to the shoulder area, thus giving him a broader shoulder. In side view, it looks much weirder since there is a big gap between the hair and the neck area but that is meant to allow the padded area on the torso to fit, thus giving him a hunchback appearance. His arms and hands also have different sculpted details resembling the fur of an animal from his shoulders down to his hands. I do appreciate the fact that Disney bothered providing a different sculpt for the arms and forearms in spite of it not being seen when he has his clothes on. His hands have amazing sculpted details as well, even the longer fingernails to imitate claws were provided. 
The sculpted fur details were also visible on both thighs, but one notable difference is that the arms and thighs have the same sculpted details. However, the intricacy of such details were more pronounced on the hind legs and hind paw since those ears are exposed, require more fine details, and as such, resembles a wolf's leg and feet. It is amazingly sculpted, even capturing the fine details of the fur and the claws of his feet. The hind paw pads were also intricately done and were provided a nice painted detail, capturing all small details at its best. Without his clothes on, Beast can easily stand alone without any problems and was balanced really well. However, once you don the clothes back on, Beast no longer has the ability to stand upright without assistance due to the fact that the padded area on his back created a different center of mass for his overall body structure, creating balance deficits on his overall structure. Therefore, it will be in dire need of a doll stand if you prefer Beast in an upright standing position for display purposes. For its articulation, his head has full rotation and nice neck extension but is limited in neck flexion. Side tilting is also executed well. The shoulder has full rotation and ability to move sideways. It has limited elbow bends due to its muscular sculpted structure and has no wrist articulation. The hips can swing forward and backward with limited ability to swing the leg sideways. It has limited knee bending, but is sufficient enough for its leg structure. It has no ankle articulation. The Beast Film Collection doll is a wonderful likeness to the movie character. The rendering of the Beast is spectacular beyond words. I love the overall presentation and it is absolutely exquisite. Belle would definitely not be complete without the Beast. I am very well pleased with how the entire facial details were captured and accurately done, but at the same time disappointed since it appears like all the creative details were spent more on the beast compared to the doll created for Belle, and both of them should have been given a fair share of the creativeness it deserves. He looks impeccable in his fine blue suit and is incredibly detailed. The quality of the materials and the sheer level of detail is outstanding, from the ornate gold foil patterns, to the brass buttons, down to his suit jacket and waistcoat, the claws and the paw pads on the beast's feet as well as the sculpted mane and fur over his arms and hind legs. The beast is the most screen accurate beast doll in the market and is very well made. Even the Hasbro version would pale in comparison when it comes to the fine, intricate details provided to it. If you are on a budget though, the Hasbro version should suffice since it comes with a Bell doll in its set. But that will be reserved for another review. Have a magical day. Bye!